Hi, I'm Black Bright, checking in after a long day's work, long day at work. And every time I think I've got a night off or a day off, something else comes to the fore. So, as you know, I'm kind of informing those who do not know what's going on or would like to know what's going on with regard to deportation, immigration and all those kind of things. And so I'm kind of doing a lot of reading and the more I read, the more I find out anyway. I kind of, it's not kind of straightforward the way um, the information works because you have to kind of piece bits together from one over there, from one over there. And I cannot say that what I'm telling you is fact. It's just me with a curious mind trying to piece things together to make sense. And so don't take my word for it. It's sheer, it's only my opinion, but I'm going to share it anyway. So today I decided to share with you my thoughts on how they intend to reduce net migration or how they have been reducing net, uh, net migration. Well, first of all, it's through um, the rigidness at the Home Office. Um, the caseworkers, and some of them has, have resigned because of it, have been told not to use their discretion, not to use the human element. If the computer says no, they're not allowed to question it. That's it. It's process oriented and there's no room for error when you complete applications. The, they, they need to make it as hard as possible for people to succeed in their applications. So this is how they're reducing net migration by doing that. By make by asking evidence, asking for evidence that's really, really difficult to attain. By not accepting um, evidence that should be um, acceptable, like the national insurance records and like the inland revenue records. They're not accepting that because they're claiming that you could be working under somebody else's name and that it doesn't have to be you and all that kind of stuff. So they're trying to make things as difficult as possible. On top of that, um, what else is it? They, they're taught, they're told to treat um, applicants with scepticism and suspicion and not to believe anything they say unless they've got evidence to prove it. When they're going through the evidence, they're making sure that, they, you know, there's nothing missing. Like I said, there's no leniency. It's just rigid. And that is how they are able either to... Um, defer applications, not accept applications, or reject applications. It's all a part of their aim to reduce net migration. Now, um, they were supposed to reduce it by the tens of thousands. In 2015 to 2016, I believe, there were 12,000 deportations. Um, they claim that they didn't have any targets, but there was some debate and Amber Rudd left and it had something to do with targets. So I don't know. Um, they then reduced it to 150 a week that they wanted to reduce. And all of these are in geographical areas. So you know that if it's a high white area, they're not going to expect too much um, deportations in that area. So they might have it a bit low there where there's a high density of um, foreigners, whether they're from the EU or the Caribbean or Africa or Asia, they'll put a lot of energy in those areas to pull in the targets. Um, they restrict appeals so that they make it difficult for people to appeal. They were at one point, they were trying to get people to appeal from the country once they're deported. But as you know, they put a stop to that. So it seems as though whatever they can get away with, while they can get away with it, they're doing it until somebody makes a noise and draws it to the Supreme Court, the Crown Court's attention. Somebody who is high up. At the moment, unless somebody makes a noise about how they're doing things, they're going to continue doing what they're doing. For example, they were deport. They were, had people detained. They weren't giving them any um, any time to contact lawyers. Now that's illegal. 
They were telling them, OK, you're going to be shipped out after three days. They give them three days notice when they're going to get shipped out, not telling them after that time um, how long they had. They used to give them the date, the flight, you know, the time they were leaving. They don't do that anymore. They had this no, no warning rule. That's been thrown out. So they have to give notice now. But what I'm saying is it's only because legislators are intervening. People who are protecting migrants are intervening. They have got away with a hell of a lot so far. And it's all to do with reducing the net migration. I mean, they've got rid of thousands. They don't tell people the thousands they've got rid of whether lawfully or unlawfully. They're not telling anybody that. They're only telling people about who's coming in. So, um, yeah, they're looking for reasons not to um, approve the application. If, you know, something petty like you haven't paid a fine or, you know, you, you've got a debt or something. Something really, really petty. They're using that as an excuse not to... Um, approve an application and like I said if you don't have money to kind of pay an attorney so that they can appeal it or push for you, you you're kind of stuck with their decision unless you're robust enough to do something yourself they set processes up designed to fail they you know like I said with the evidence with the tricky forms, with the complicated forms, not even somebody with an ounce of intelligence can complete those forms. They're contradictory. They have one bit there, one bit there. Everything is supposed to be intertwined. They're all designed to trip you up. So you make a mistake. So that's what I'm saying. They set, um, they set up processes designed to fail. And this is all in order to meet internal enforcement targets. Um, I'm going to have to read this. There's 12 enforced removals between 2017 and 2018. The target was 12,800. Um, they changed it to 230 to 250 enforced deportations a week. That was during 2016 to 2017, which is when the hostile policy was in. Uh, the target dropped in 2017 to 2018, but we know that there are discrete deportations. I mean, half the time, if somebody didn't leak it out, we wouldn't know. Those, deep, those um, Jamaicans that were deported the other day, we wouldn't have known if it hadn't got leaked out. They're just piling them all on, on, a, on a charter flight and shipping them out. Um, they want. They don't want to use the word target because it makes it sound bad. So they want to use performance goals and they want to use words like um, expectations and aims. <clears throat> I mean, give me a break. You know what I mean? A target is a target. You want to get rid of so many immigrants. Say you want to get rid of so many immigrants. Don't bother pretty it up. Um, and another another way they get um, they're reducing net migration, of course, is through this Operation Nexus, stopping people without a real good reason. And you know it's a sus law, really, but they're saying it's to look for knife crime or it's to look for drugs or blah blah blah. But really, it's no better than the sus law. So they're using that, to make you know, doing a call out to the Home Office, boof. You know, if you're an overstayer, you get deported. You don't even get you, you don't even have a leg to stand on, really, because they make sure that it's all hush hush. Get them in, get them out as quick as possible. That's really what they're doing. It's not what they're meant to be doing, but that is what they're doing. And if they can get away with it and everybody's working together, that is what they're doing. Um, they have immigration officers on standby. You're arrested just for suspicion, not for anything in particular, no. Just because they suspect you of doing something, they can take you in and give you the going over and run you through their immigration status check. Um, you're criminalised by association. You just happen to be talking to somebody who's a bit dodgy. They can take you in for that. Um, of course, we all know they keep stopping rusters and people who look like they smoke a spliff. That's how they get the older generation, because they're the ones more likely to be smoking a spliff than anybody else so that's how they get them and they call that you know that's why they don't want to legalize it because if they do they don't have an excuse to deport um 
they're preventing detainees from having access to legal advice. I think I said that to you, but the Supreme Court overruled that. Um, what else is there that they're doing? Oh, another thing there now, and also what they're doing to reduce net migration through the vetting of forms is they're only approving highly skilled, they're driving out the um, low skilled, they're doing this through work checks, employment, you know, these employee checks, they're driving out people through um, the, did I say rent checks? Yeah, rent checks, employee checks, landlord checks, they're not going, they're not, oh yeah, they're only, if they are approving any of them, they're doing it the expensive way through indefinite leave to remain, which is only, you know, not indefinite leave to remain, sorry, leave to remain, giving them two to 2.5 years, knowing that in 2.5 years they've got a fork out about four or 5,000, depending how many is in their family. Um, they're not allowed, they're only allowing they're only allowing direct family members, no extended family members anymore. Um, and of course, you know that you're going to have to do a DNA check. You have to use their um, laboratory. So that's going to cost you 500 quid. You know, it's really all to do with, you know, if you want to stay here, it's going to cost you an arm and a leg. Um restrict they're going to restrict access to work or if they're not they do it now anyway through different ways and means and of course we all know if you want to bring a spouse you need to be earning 18,600 now that is it in a cut and dry fashion of course it's not going to be as um blatant as that it's all going to be wrapped up in a nice little package um to, you know but to be honest, underneath all of that nice little packaging, this is how they intend to reduce migration. This is what, this is my thought. Remember, it's just my opinion. Um, it could be a valid way. But the thing is, is that I wouldn't even mind if they did what they were doing to reduce my migration. You know what I abhor? The fact that they treat the detainees like animals. The fact that they brutalise them, the fact that they abuse them, the fact that they treat them like crap, that's what I don't like. Fine if you've got a job to do, fine if you need to deport people, but what they have in those detention centres are racist people and people on their teams. Although, remember that guy, I forget his name now, that African guy that they killed on on the fl on the flight that they, they he was being deported they killed him three officers african he was an african man they killed him at the back of the plane you know these are these are not normal mentally stable people that they're putting in charge of detainees that's what pees me off if they were treating them with respect and putting them through the procedures in a proper way and if they do put them in a detention centre put them in there and treat them properly you don't use that as an excuse to abuse and assault it's just that is what I hate about the whole of this and the amount of people who have been really really abused going through this process it's really awful and I don't believe that they should be punished in that way. They're being punished anyway. They're losing their family. They're losing their connection. They're having to leave without anything. They're going to their homeland in chains like criminals, which is a disgrace. Isn't that enough? On top of that, you have to be abusing and beating them up and assaulting them and insulting them. That's what I don't like. Anyway, that is my opinion on how they are going to reduce net migration by making anybody who applies for leave to remain as difficult and as expensive and as uncomfortable as possible, in a nutshell. And that's all for now. Bye bye.